let us see different type of metallurgical process so uh, number one is crushing and grinding of ores this other other another name of this uh, crushing and grinding is pulverization pulverization another name actually in this what happens huge lumps of ores uh, these lumps of ores is converted into fine powder to make the chemical changes easier so if the powder will be fine then it is easier to make the chemical changes so here what happens different type of crushers are used so depending upon the nature and the hardness of the ores this uh, huge lumps of ores convert into the fine powder after this uh, step is concentration and dressing of ores here uh, it uh, ores contain some non metallic impurities and other rocky metals like sand clay silicates mica so these non metallic impurities are actually called as gang or matrix so this is called as gang or matrix so we need to remove this gang and matrix from the ore to get the more concentration of ore so to remove this thing there are different methods are employed so one method is called as mechanical separations or hand picking here impurities are removed by the hand picking so what are the main demerit in this method is that it is actually time consuming it is actually time consuming and concentrated ores is not of high quality so this is this method is not actually used next is your hydraulic separation so in hydraulic separations uh, this is called as gravity separation method or levigation l e v e g i l e v i g a t i o n so what is the basic principle behind this hydraulic separation so in this it is based on relative density of ore and gang particles so here gang particles are lighter in weight uh, ores are heavier in weight so they are easily separate out so in this methods powder ore is washed in running stream of water and most of the gang particles which are lighter in weight so they washed away and heavier ores are settled behind or remain behind so you can see this diagram uh, so this is the one diagram of the uh, uh, of hydraulic washing here you can see it this is a hopper in which the powder ore is there water is coming this side this is a sloping part so this sloping parts you can see this uh, water is flowed down these are the ores these are the ores okay and these are the blockages refills bumps and uh, wooden table are having a slanting for this slanting floor so which along wooden steps so these are refills so here ores are blocked water flows down along the gang particles so gang mixed with the water lighter particles sand clay or these are washed away and collected over here so this is normally we are using in tin stone iron ores or any kind of ores so this is a hydraulic washing or gravity separation method now next is your our magnetic separation method so in this method what we are say it is again based on the principle uh, principle that magnetic properties of the ores and gang particles so in this we can see here there is a two uh, rollers are there so this is your non magnetic roller this is magnetic rollers here in from hopper uh, ores are coming here powder ores coming here so this is uh, uh, so, uh, uh, coming on the belt this is a leather belt so this the belt is moving forward direction this is moving this is moving okay on moving what happens uh, magnetic ores will be attracted towards this magnets and non magnetic will be further off from this one also this is the impurities which is non magnetic in nature and ores will be attracted up this side so with the help of motion they will fall this side so here magnetic ores separate out here non magnetic impurities separate out so here normally we are using magnetic ores or some magnetic uh, pyrolusite ores are also used in this we contain some tin impurities these tin stones are non magnetic in nature so they are not attracted to attracted towards the magnet and separate out wolframite is the ores so in which fe uh, w o tungsten ores in which uh, tin stone is separate out from the as a impurities they are non metallic separate out from the ore from it iron to oxide mn2 are the magnetic substance they might be are separate out so in this way we can separate the uh, impurities as well as uh, its magnetic ores together now next uh, important process is your froth flotation process so this ores is exclusively used for the sulfide type of ore sulfide ores we have already seen zinc sulfide calamine no sorry zinc sulfide cinnabar galena pyrite 
so all these are odds we have already seen so let us see this diagram to understand this one so this is a diagram of the froth flotation process you can see here this is a big steel tank okay in which one pipe is there this pipe is rotating paddle is there and this paddle contains holes so in this paddle uh, air is passing and this steel tank is filled with uh, powder wood means sulfide ores powder wood means here sulfide ores plus any palm oil so mainly we use pine oil plus uh, potassium or potassium ethyl xanthate so these are the compounds present inside it and this paddle is rotating so from air over to this is the max is passing and is rotating so what happens on rotations what happens uh, so this uh, water particles this water particles will wet wet the gang particles water present in this steel tank will wet only Uh, gang particles and settle down gang particles have really settle down but which is sulfide or they will be attracted towards the palm oil or pine oil they are attracted towards the pine oil due to hydrophobic in nature and they will come with the help of some chemicals also like ethyl xanthate with a, they will make the foams they will help in making the foams so they will uh, come on the surface of the this uh, whole tanks as a, in the form of foam and this will be Uh, flow down in another uh, flow uh, froth collecting tanks so this will be collected over here so this is actually sulfide ores due to light in nature so what is the basic principle behind this uh, flotation process is the basic principle is, is based on different weighting tendency of the ore and gang particles surface of the ore particles are hydrophobic while gang particles are hydrophilic so example we have seen zinc sulfide galena pyrite fes2 so uh, only sulfide ores stick with the Uh, attracted towards the pine oil due to hydrophobic natures and water attached to the other impurities and in this way both are separated out after this we have next is uh, leaching chemical process so it is a chemical process other uh, four process was physical process this chemical process in this process Uh, again you take any crude same crude powder ores and again leaching agent suitable agent which will have which also called as a leaching agent and after this one they will make you soluble complex so this ores is uh, again this soluble complex is again reprecipitated to form a from a soluble complex to get the, uh, the main uh, crude matter so we'll get uh, this one after this we'll get soluble complex but in soluble impurities so this is again separated out, out, out by separated out by filtration method So let's see one example to understand this thing. So we have an example one Bayer process. So in the Bayer process, uh, I am taking aluminium oxide twice H two. So in the presence of suitable agent, means leaching agent is here, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. So and temperature, this temperature. So what happens? This box side, this will form a soluble complex. So soluble complex is sodium aluminium, sodium meta aluminate plus water. This will be as a steel. so again this plus impurities this plus this means this plus impurities impurities here is uh, silicates titanium oxide these are the impurities will separate out through filtration and again this ores soluble soda meta aluminate again they will react with the uh, water they will hydrolyze it and they will form aluminum hydroxide as a precipitate on heating we will get pure alumina plus this thing so in this way we can uh, separate out this one in gang particles from the bauxites like this thing the another fourth process that is called as mac arthur forest cyanide process in this way same you can take this used for the silver gold mostly silver sulfide gold again they are uh, uh, react with the leaching agent sodium cyanide put a cyanide and water and plus some air is also supplied uh, so to make again soluble complex plus, plus impurities impurities separate out soluble complex plus impurities so again impurity is impurities separate out so again with the help of some reducing agent uh, this will react to the uh, reducing agent and they will form this complex and plus silver and gold is precipitated out from this ores so these are the process here again why we are supplying too much air because if you don't supply air then what will happen silver sulfide and sodium cyanide will react each other and reaction of this and this is reversible nature so if you supply air so the, the reaction will go forward and you will get this complex so supply of air is very important so next our topic is after getting this one uh, concentration of ore so we our target is to convert into reducible form so conversion of ore into reducible form so here we have two methods one is called as calcination and second is called as roasting so what is calcination calcination means it is a method in which we do a strong heating a strong heating of the concentrated ore below melting point 
either in absence of oxygen or in presence of limited supply of air or oxygen. And this process carried in a river variety furnace. It is a special kind of furnace that we will study later on. So calcium is thus in uh, limited supply below melting state in solid state. So which are the different ores are employed? Here we require hydrated oxide ores or carbonate oxide. So they will they will convert into oxide ores. So again, uh, what were changes take place in this in this change take place? Uh, ores become porous. Ores become porous. Moisture is removed, all volatile impurities are removed. Carbonate is converted into CO2. So this will come out from, from the concentrated ores as a gas. Next is your aluminium oxide. So this is your hydrated oxide. You heat it, it will become Al2O3 plus water. Similarly, uh, limonite. So this is the ores of iron oxide. Again, heat it, if it, if it, you will get Fe2O3. This is a roasting. So again, zinc oxide, it will come, you will get zinc oxide plus carbon dioxide. Similarly, dolomite, so dolomite will give you calcium oxide. Maximum. We are getting, this is volatile impurities removed. Next is your roasting. So in this, heating of ore below its melting point in presence of air or oxygen. So it is done in river reactory or blast furnace. So here, you can do in blast furnace also. Uh, so these two furnace we will discuss later on. Again, this is, uh, next point is, you have to do it with sulfide ores. And again, condition is, the ore should be in solid state, not in liquid or gaseous state. So again, roasting is two types based on the nature of chemical chain. We do roasting two methods. One with the help of oxygen. So if you supply more oxygen, so we can see here zinc sulfide plus oxygen. It will give you zinc oxide plus sulfur dioxide. This is a gas, is oxide ore. Uh, so is you copper glands. It will react with the oxygen. So it will give you CO2, oxide ore plus sulfur dioxide, copper pyrite. So they will give you your, uh, this plus this product, sulfide. And then here sulfide again reacted with the oxygen and it will go iron oxide plus sulfur. So these are the impurities which come out from the ores. So this is called oxidative roasting. So here you can see here uh, some metals of the sulfide ores are reduced directly to metal. Why Why am I directly to metal? Because already we are seeing they are converting into oxide ores. But in pseudo oxides they are directly converting into metals. For you see here, if you take a copper glands, so if you give roasting, so they will come, uh, convert into oxide plus sulfur dioxide. This uh, CO2 will act as a reducing agent. This CO2 will act as a good reducing agent and they will convert, uh, they will combine with the CO2 as a copper glands and convert to this copper this copper is called as blister copper and sulfur dioxide. This blister copper is that something 98% copper is there. So this process is called as self reduction or auto reduction. This is uh, this happens uh, with some of the matter that we will discuss in next topic. Next is chlorinating roasting, chlorinating roasting. In this, some metals which are difficult to oxidize. Okay, so like titanium, silver ore. So for that, reduction is done by the halide ores. So how we do it? So we take titanium carbon. We cannot do oxygen. We have to supply chlorine. So they will convert into titanium chloride plus CCl4. Similarly, sulfur sulfide. Here we require roasting. So again, we do NaCl. They will react with the HCl plus Na2. So they cannot be given roasting. Here roasting is not possible. 